I'm changing my mind on this piece. And uh, I'm going to go back to the original design. Um, I've got somebody that might be interested in it, and that's not the only reason I'm changing my mind. I just think it uh, might be too much. And so I'm going back to my original design, and I'm going to start something different. Man, are they getting ready to rain out there? Yeah, I didn't get in here Friday because I was setting up a, a new gallery here in Ennis. Um, the, uh, gee, I can't say the name of it. <laughs> Marmac uh, Gallery or something like that. I, I can't think of the name of it, but uh, I am just uh, was busy doing that and then there was an art walk that night and uh, on top of me having to run the Bozeman that morning so it was, a, it was a busy day. I'm going to set my figure to the side and you know just work on him at another time with another setup maybe. So let's see. I'm going to lift up the clay that I put down last week, go back to the round base. See everything's reversible. That's why I wasn't worried about trying the idea out. So I'm going to do this and get this clay out of the way because I got an idea for another clay. Thing about this clay, you can use it over again. Okay, I'm going to try something I've never tried before using uh, a large horse armature that I get from uh, that I got from uh, True Form. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to use this armature, but it doesn't mean I can't use it as uh, the guide for making an armature for a horse. I'm going to measure this from the bend of the neck to the tip of the uh, point of the hips right here. And that's uh, there, ten and a half inches. So I want to make this one two-thirds smaller, I think. What I'm thinking of doing is, is there is a uh, fiddler, well actually a, a, a gentleman who's walking across country to California in, in you know, in 1849 or 50, um, a gentleman uh, is left the west, or the east coast, and he's heading out west uh, to California, and he's walking uh, a good share of the way, um, using a, carrying a backpack and all that other stuff, um, which means I'm going to have to do some research on backpacks and stuff of that period. Um, but anyway, a group of Indians surround him and uh, they're taunting him and then he puts down the backpack and pulls out his uh, uh, violin or, or fiddle and starts uh, playing the fiddle and uh, entertaining the Indians. And, uh, I, and so I, I was thinking of having maybe three Indians on horseback. Uh, surrounding him and each of them uh, in a different attitude uh, towards the music. Uh, one in wonderment, uh, another one uh, critical, another one scratching his head or or touching the uh, end of the uh, fiddle with his uh, acoustic. I don't know. It's just an idea that came in my head. I thought it might be kind of a funny little piece to do. So, I want to divide this up into three. Okay, I want to go down to one third. See, on, on these uh, architectural um, rulers, we've got different measurements one for an inch, one for one half scale, one for one eighth scale, and one for a quarter scale, three eighth scale, one and a half scale, or three inch scale. 
so you can have it at different scales. I used to draw with these back when I was in high school in, in architecture, uh, mechanical drawing. I think what I'm going to do, I'll get this worked out and then I'll come back. Because right now I'm totally confused. I know it's probably hard to see, but I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing to scale uh, this, uh, the links of these bones onto uh, a drawing I'm doing of a scale of the horse. So that's four and a half. And I go to three eighths of an inch scale and I go four and a half. There's four right there. That's that bone there. Wow, that's really close. <laughs> Holy cow! Not bad at all, Dave. Let's see what the length of the uh, rib cage is. That's uh, nine inches. I got my rib cage at one, two, three, nine. How about that? Pretty darn good. This is baling wire here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple armature for a horse using a wire that you can buy at any hardware store. It's called baling wire. And it's probably because it's uh, the same gauge as the type of wire that they use to bale hay. What I got worked out. This is the uh, horse armature here for the different uh, lengths on the uh, legs. And since I'm using wax, I don't have to worry about the uh, support as much because the wax holds itself pretty good. The reason I'm doing this small is because this is going to be really expensive as it is, just being small. Uh, and if I get enough interest in this piece, maybe I can do some bigger, a bigger version of it. But uh, for now, I'm just going to do the small. doing is just following the, the rib cage up and back on itself and that's uh, how you make the rib cage okay and wrap that to keep it in place That just gives strength to the back of the horse armature. And I don't need all that much tape, so I'll just cut off the excess. There we go. So now we got the beginnings of the horse. And I want to find the center of this wire, so I just Put it on my finger and balance it. When it gets balanced, that's the center. I'm going to pinch this tightly up here. And uh, you can see it pretty well got the uh, evenness of it. So I'm going to uh, take this, put it on the back, and I'm going to go oh, just a little ways down the back. So I got some place to anchor it. Let's see if I can get this around where you can see it. Okay, and I, I take the uh, right where the shoulder blade is, and I bend it at the right angle. And I got both wires in that pinch, and I straighten them out. And I want to equal. Ooh, it's coming. I I got to go home and turn off my power on my computer because I just. Remember, I left it on, so I'm going to just finish this, and I'm going to have to call it quits for today. Besides, I've got uh, my wax softening up. Now I've bent for the 
that bone, now you, that joint, and now you just go down to the bottom of the feet, right there. And what I do is I put this straddle the uh, armature and uh, grab me a piece of trusty electrician's tape and I tape that to the armature. So now I just spread the, the shoulders. There we go. Instant, instant legs on both sides of the uh, rib cage. And they're in equal in length and bend so that uh, you don't have to worry about that. All right, let's do the uh, back legs real quick. So I just showed you how to use a true form armature as a guide for your uh, sculpture. I mean, even if you don't ever, <coughs> even if you never put a piece of clay on the armature, you've got it for your uh, reference. And if you mount it up on its board that it comes with, then you've got a standing figure. I just don't have mine mounted right now. Again, I'm bending at the joints, keeping everything at the right angles. This. And let's see. That leg is not wanting to bend. Okay, there we go. Got it on the joint. Again, we having this as the uh, point of the hip. Um, that's my reference. That's where that goes right there. And I just take that on there. And then you just spread wide for the hips and put the knees. Straightforward. Now you got a you got an armature for a horse. All right, that's going to be it for today, and uh, I hope that helps you. And I've got three more to make. Now I'm going to run home and get my computer. I don't know if you can see it, but coming right from over uh, where Virginia City is on the other side of the mountains there. The storm is coming west, or east, I mean, and coming down the valley. And it's just starting to rain up there on the pass. It's uh, almost clear at the north and almost, almost clear on the south. But it's coming our way. Right, that's going to be it for today, and I'll pick it up uh, tomorrow, uh, depending on one factor. Todd Connor uh, needs my help uh, setting up his new uh, flat screen TV. I'm the electronic wizard in the valley, naturally. And so, uh, I might be doing that tomorrow. I uh, might also have a model will be coming over sometime this week and uh, to shoot from. I'm thinking about doing a Pioneer piece and uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to play it day by day. I'm going to be leaving a week from Wednesday for Lake Tahoe, I think. I'm not certain what the calendar is, but uh, I'm leaving the second of next month. 
and uh, starting my show on the 4th and going through the 14th or 15th of next month. So I'll be there for two weeks. All right, good night, everybody.